Okay, we're at the tail end. This is the final recording. This records from 51 to 62, so we can finish the whole thing. Um, I may stop at 60 and do the last two, I'm not sure. We'll see. All right, so let me get Scrappy's paper and something to write with. All right, so looking at a blank doc, I'm gonna start with 51. And 51 is the same concept, so is 52, 53. Um, if you want to come see me for office hours, so 51, 52 to 53, I think it's the same thing. Um, and same thing here for um, just know 51 is A, 52 gives us D, and 53 is B. Again, I kind of explained that to you where we were talking about what am I missing to get back to the 11? Because technically what I'm explaining on uh, on 53 in particular, if this angle measure right here is 10 pi over 11, what I'm missing is this piece here. So in this case, that would be one uh, one pi over 11, negative one pi over 11. All right. Um, so anyway, so you guys come see me for office hours. Um, 54, we have 10 of 10 inverse of negative 5.8. And this should yield us, this should be negative, this should also be negative 5.8. And that goes back to the notes from section 5.4. So I'll refer you back to your notes in 5-4. Uh, actually, no, 5-7. The last set of notes we did. Um, what number? 55. And in 55, we have, um, so just remember, we're trying to complete the value here. So if this is sine inverse of the sine of 4 pi over 7, what am I missing to get to pi? So in this case, if you think of it as seven pi over seven minus four pi over seven, you end up with three pi over seven. And that is your answer choice. Uh, so this is what, 55? So this should be answer choice B. Okay. So look at 56. Fifty-six is actually very easy. You're thinking about a triangle. They're giving you, so this is 56. I want to make sure that we're talking on the same page here. They're talking to you about sine of secant inverse. So remember, secant inverse has cosine as its uh, reciprocal, right? So this is square root of x squared plus four, all of this over x. So go back to the basic concept of sine is uh, y over r, cosine is x over r. So therefore it's reciprocal secant is nothing more than y over, excuse me, r over x. So we need to, again, Think of some general triangle. I don't care. I keep drawing them this way. Um, whenever it comes to drawn to scale, don't bother with me. So there you go. 90 degrees. All right. So here's what we do know. We do know that 
let's assume this is our, our angle and we're looking at the secant, which would mean if this was a secant, um, so remember cosine is x over r. So if I'm looking at the cosine of this, I'm looking at literally x over square root of x squared plus four. And the secant of this would be the square root of x squared plus four over x. I just need to find y, which Pythagorean theorem, right? So what I really have here is um, by default will be two. And I'm gonna give you a little, little hint. This number, the square root of it is two. This should be two here. And this is just common sense because we know that if I do x squared plus two squared, this is equal to the r squared. This is the r. That means that I have x squared plus four is equal to r squared. And therefore, if I take the square root of both, now I have r is equal to the square root of x squared plus four, hello. So again, the sine of this angle, y over r, will simply be two over the square root of x squared plus four, which if I rationalize that denominator, this all cancels, the radicals cancel anyway, you're left with, in this case, two square root x squared plus four over plain old x squared plus four because the radicals go away. So that should have been, for 56, it should be b. And you run the same gamut or the same philosophy here as approach as you approach this question. You're going to do the same thing. Okay, so for 57, you have the cosine of 10 inverse x. So 10 of x would mean that you would have to have some, th some theta here. And we know that this is x over one. And we need to solve for this part of the, the graph, which is basically x squared plus one squared, which is redundant, is equal to that box squared, call it r squared which means that when I take the square root of both sides, I end up with the square root of x squared plus one. So I'm now looking for cosine. Cosine of this would be one over, would be ka, right? So cosine of this angle. So this is square root of x squared plus one. So for 57, I think your answer choice will actually end up being, um, so it's one over the square root of x squared plus one. Once again, I have to rationalize that denominator. So I'll multiply by the x squared plus one on both sides, top and bottom, I'm sorry, not both sides. So this ends up being final answer, square root x squared plus one over x squared plus one. It looks to me like 57 should be answer choice C. Okay, same thing again. All right, so we have, in this case, 
you have the sine of 10 inverse x over square root of 2. So again, you can draw yourself some triangle. I don't care which way you're going to face it. Just know that not to use a 90 degree. So OA, so this would be x over square root of 2. And we just need to solve for this hypotenuse. So we know that x squared plus square root of 2 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus 2 Oh, so, sorry, I had a moment. The x squared plus 2 is equal to that hypotenuse squared. So therefore, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of x squared plus 2. And if I'm looking at the sine, this would be x over the hypotenuse, which is right here. So x over square root of x squared plus 2. Again, rationalize that denominator top and bottom, to erase that for a moment. Your final answer should be the square root x times x squared plus two over x squared plus two. So I believe I'm in 59, 59 should be D. Yeah, D it is. All right, I think you can handle number 60 on your own. I'm gonna leave you 60 to you. All right, and I'll come back with 61, 62. Let me close this up.